Sponsoring today's video, we have our monthly sponsor, GVG Mall. This time with a Black Friday deal that you can't miss. We get the usual $17 lowered to $14. And even better, on top of that, you can use my SKAG code and get another 20% off, lowering the price to $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in no time and you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I should gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel once again. Today's video is another CPU comparison, this time the Ryzen 5 3600 non-X because you asked that in the previous video of the Ryzen 5, I mean the 2600X versus the 3600XT versus the 5600X, uh, you asked for the non-XT or non-X version, so this time we have the Ryzen 5 3600 non-X versus the Ryzen 5 5600X versus the Core i5-10600K. The three CPUs are tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K and using 3200MHz CL14 RAM, also we have stock and overclocked tests. The GPU used is the RX 5700 XT using medium settings and yes, I know, I know, in some cases and mostly at, 10, uh, at 1440p and over, even at medium settings, the GPU will be the bottleneck. Ok, I know it, but not in all scenarios and mostly not at 1080p, um, that's why I'm using medium settings, but these tests will be remade once I get my RX 6800 or 6800 XT sent by AMD or so they said. And yeah, I'm making these tests because uh, people really wanted to know, uh, mostly with the Core i5-10600K overclocked and stock, they wanted to know what would be the results against uh, the 3600 and mostly the 5600X, the 5600X that have been, that has been recently launched, damn English. And well, without any further delays, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And let's go to the part you want to see, the testing. It's all about humanity. Today's video, as usual, starts with Assassin's Creed Odyssey benchmark that will be exchanged for Assassin's Creed Valhalla in a close future. We all know that AC games are exceptionally CPU dependent, actually way more than they should. At 1080p the max we can get out of the Ryzen 5 3600 is 83 FPS once overclocked to 4.3 GHz across all cores, while even the i5-10600K is struggling to get 90 FPS at stock. Once overclocked, it reaches around 94 average FPS, but still losing by 2 FPS for the recently launched Ryzen 5 5600X. At 1440p, we still get a CPU bottleneck, and the results being the same. Also, take in consideration that the temperatures presented by Ryzen 5 3600 were way higher than the remaining CPUs.
Another really good game to test CPUs is Far Cry New Dawn. In here we can see how big the difference is. Damn! A 1080p Ryzen 5 3600 can't simply push more than 111 average FPS, with the 1% low staying in the lower 80s. The i5 10600K, on the other hand, can push a bit more frames even at stock, and once overclocked, it raises the bar to 127 average FPS and 94.7 in the 1% lows. Although it isn't enough to beat the Ryzen 5 5600X, pushing around 10 more average FPS and 5 more FPS in the 1% lows. The overall difference is not that much, and take in consideration that the i5 is actually cheaper than the Ryzen 5 5600X. Overall, the three CPUs can play this game pretty damn well. Sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Hello? Anyone? This time with a GPU heavy title, Remedies Control. If you haven't played this game yet, well, do it now because you're missing a lot. As you can see, even at 140 average FPS, we're getting GPU bottlenecked, so the results are obviously the same. Although there are noticeable lower 1% lows with the 5600X, maybe due to early BIOS, who knows. Looking at the bigger picture, if you aren't playing Control at over 140 average FPS, then you are more than okay with any one of these CPUs, and you should look mostly into upgrading your GPU in the first place. So, well, let's move on. Now we have Ghost Recon Breakpoint using the usual medium settings and Vulkan API. We can clearly see that at 1440p and 4K we run into a GPU bottleneck, so the difference will be virtually none. Still, at 1080p we can see some differences, and the most noticeable one is with the Ryzen 5 3600 that can't seem to achieve more than 167 average FPS even overclocked to 4.3GHz across all cores. Both Ryzen 5 5600X and the i5 10600K gives us around the same values once both are overclocked. And if we get both at stock, Ryzen 5 5600X is a bit stronger. Basically, if you aim for an average of 130 FPS or lower, all CPUs are fine and completely fine for this game. Red Dead Redemption 2 is indeed a beloved game, but it's still also a really heavy one. As it can be seen, it will tax way more your GPU than your CPU, and we would probably start getting differences between CPUs only above 150 average FPS or more, but since my RX 5700 XT can only achieve just below 100, the difference, apart from the 1% lows, is null. Unless you have a really really strong GPU and aim to run this game at over 100 average FPS, even the cheap Ryzen 5 2600X or the i5 10400F that aren't presented on these tests would be completely fine to run this game at max settings, if, of course, you have a GPU capable of handling it. Let's move to the next game.
The last game is Rainbow Six Siege, using medium settings and Vulcan API. I can't stop stressing this, but this game is really well optimized. Even at over 300 average FPS, we usually run into a GPU bottleneck. Still, we can see that Ryzen 5 5600X is able to push things even further, and I am sure it would even push more FPS if I had a stronger card like, for example, my future RX 6800XT. Although, most people are using 60 and 75Hz monitors, so even an FX 8350 would be able to push those frames in this game. And for people looking to play competitively, unless you want more than 340 average FPS, even the Ryzen 5 3600 will suffice. The last test of today's video is Cinebench R15. Here we have interesting results. We can see here how much more efficient the Ryzen Arc is at multi-threading compared to Intel's one. Even Ryzen 5 3600 will be slightly faster or equal to the overclocked i5 10600K at multi-threading while having 700 MHz less. 700 MHz. If we compare stock to stock, the i5 gets even more humiliated in this aspect. Though, overclocking these chips to 5GHz is pretty easy, so yeah. As for the Ryzen 5 5600X, well, it is in a different league with over 2000 points in multi-threading and over 250 points in single thread, after we overclock it to 4.7GHz in all cores, sorry. This shows us once again how AMD improved their arc even further, because this Ryzen 5 5600X has 300 MHz less than the i5 10600K and it is destroying it in every possible aspect. Although, yeah, it also costs usually $50 more, so it's a trade. Let's move to the conclusion. So guys, concluding, well, um, as we've seen before, it's basically uh, what we were expecting. So, uh, the Ryzen 5 3600, it's cheaper, but also in the bottom of the performance charts. Uh, in the top of the performance charts, we have the recently launched Ryzen 5 5600X, $300. So, um, it's quite... It's quite a, a big value compared to the $200 of the 3600. Still, we have in between the, uh, the Core i5 10600K costs around $250, so $50 more than the Ryzen 5 3600, but $50 less than the 5600X. So it is in between, and in terms of gaming, it completely destroys the 3600. Although, it doesn't destroy the 5600X. So, in terms of multi-threading, you have the, the Core i5 and the Ryzen 5 3600 uh, mostly on the same degree. So, they are more or less equal in terms of multi-threading, but when it comes to pure gaming, the, Ryzen, the, the Core i5 10600K is way faster, and let me tell you, it overclocks easily to 5GHz, easily on a $30 cooler. So, it's cold and overclocks easily, so I could basically overclock these, this chip to like 5.2 or 5.3 GHz and I would even get more performance or maybe I, just, I could just buy uh, 4400 MHz RAM and have higher performance. So basically, um, of course I can do the same at least in, in the other CPUs, but what I mean is that it is all a matter of price performance and for gaming and some multi-threading, the Core i5-10600K is indeed what you need to get. Now, um, we have to look at the motherboards also. So the motherboards, in order to overclock the i5, you need a Z490 motherboard, um, and that costs a lot more than, for example, a B450, where you can put your Ryzen 5, um, your Ryzen 5 5000 series, your Ryzen 5000 series. So the price that you got in the end is almost the same by getting the 10600K with a Z490, or, of course, the, the 5600X with a B450, so it's more or less the same price, it's a matter of choice overall. For the, the budget, get the 2600X or the 3600. Uh, if you want the middle term in, in terms of multi-threading performance, uh, price 
and gaming performance, the Core i5-10600K is the way to go. If you want the top performance and you don't care about prices, well, then you can simply go for the 5600X with an X570 motherboard, although I don't advise it, I really don't advise it unless you need the features. So get a cheaper B550 motherboard with the Ryzen 5 5600X and you're good to go. That's all for today, guys. Really, thanks a lot for watching. I know this shirt is awesome. You can get one with the link below. So go to the link below to my store in Teespring, which is the official uh, YouTube partner for the shirts. And you can get this design that I made uh, of the evolution of man with the PC Master Race here, the Ancient Gameplays logo here, and the, Illumi the Illuminati logo on the back. So it's pretty awesome. You can buy the V-neck, you can buy the usual t-shirt, you can buy the tee, you can buy the sleeve, the, the long sleeve t-shirt, you can buy whatever you want. It's there and you have way more designs. So go to the link in the description because you want to get one of these. Believe me. Thanks again for watching guys and see you in the next video.